Hello everybody. In this lab, our objective is to illustrate the design and operation of a rapid sand filter and understand the relationship between water quality and filter operation. The rapid sand filter is commonly used for treating municipal surface water supplies. This type of filter removes non-settleable flock particles and impurities remaining after chemical coagulation and sedimentation of raw water. Water passes downward through the filter media driven by gravity. The action taking place in a rapid sand filter consists of straining, flocculation, and sedimentation. Straining occurs primarily at the interface between the filter media and water. Flock growth is dependent upon the chance of particles coming into contact with one another. And sedimentation occurs when particles smaller than the pore space in the filter accumulate on the filter media. As the interstices of the filter become clogged and a mat forms on the filter surface, head loss in the bed increases. The end of a filter run, or the filtration phase, is reached when the suspended material in the affluent starts to increase beyond an acceptable level, known as breakthrough, or when a limiting head loss occurs across the filter bed. Once either of these conditions is reached, the filtra filtration process is terminated and the filter is backwashed to remove material that has accumulated within the filter bed. In this lab, one filter bed will be used to illustrate the operation of a single media sand filter. Head loss profiles will be constructed for the filter at specified time intervals by using piezometers placed at various depths in the media. Filtrate quality will also be monitored by performing turbidity measurements at three minute intervals to determine the filter operating characteristics. Please wear all required PPE while performing this lab. Lab coat, gloves, safety goggles, and with any long hair tied back. This is a demonstration lab, meaning that the technicians will operate the filter apparatus following this procedure. Preparation. A. Weigh 75 Gooch crucibles to be used for TSS. B. Calibrate turbidimeters with standards of 0 and 40 NTU. And C. Label 25 Nalgene bottles, 125 milliliters, to be used for sampling. Start the filtration. A. Turn on the centrifugal pump to pump sample into the column. This is time zero. B. Use the valve on the filtration flow meter to adjust the flow to around 50 liters per hour while maintaining a constant head. This means that the fluid level should be in the middle of the piezometers in tubes 1 through 10. Monitor the filtration process. A. Record the fluid levels in the piezometer tubes 1 through 10. The levels may fluctuate rapidly. Mark the levels in each tube first, then read them. B. Take approximately 100 milliliter samples of the effluent to be analyzed for turbidity and TSS. C. Use turbidity measurement results and head loss observations to determine when breakthrough has occurred. D. Monitor for 5 to 10 minutes after breakthrough. And E. Stop the pump. Start the backwash process. A. Remove the sample in the sample reservoir and rinse it with a large amount of water. Fill the reservoir to the 80 liter mark. B. Turn on the centrifugal pump to pump water into the bottom of the column. This is time zero. C. Use the valve on the backwash flow meter to adjust the flow to around 300 liters per hour. Monitor for no more than six minutes in total until the sample shows very low turbidity, meaning less than one NTU. Continue backwashing for an additional 10 minutes at around 600 liters per hour before turning off the pump. Be careful of water on the floor and walk slowly while in the lab. 
After this lab, you should know how to operate a rapid sand filter and understand the relationship between water quality and filter operation.